Number 12. Suppose the weight of the drawbridge in figure 9.33 is supported entirely by its hinges in the opposite shore so that its cables are slack. The mass of the bridge is 2,500 kilograms. Letter A. What fraction of the weight is supported by the opposite shore if the point of support is directly beneath the cable attachments? All right, so here's that picture. They're talking about the weight of this drawbridge right here being supported by the hinge here, okay, and this shore over here. So in terms of the forces that the hinge then is uh, imparting to the drawbridge and this shore, I drew a little picture over here on the left-hand side. The force of the hinge then, all right, is pointing directly upwards, and the force of the opposing shore is pointing also directly upwards uh, because the center of mass is pointing downwards, okay, and therefore the weight, right? That's the uh, force there. So what we are tasked to do is we are tasked to find the fraction of the weight supported by the shore. So the fraction of the total weight, that is. All right, so uh, if we, you know, just look at the general nature of this picture, this picture should look like a torque picture, right? We have a certain lever arm of sorts, and there are several forces acting on that rigid arm at several distances. So since the bridge is not moving, we know that it is in equilibrium, and therefore the sum of the torques will all equal zero. Now, in order for me to start talking about torques, I have to find a... Uh, axis of rotation somewhere along this black rigid bar. Now, you can basically choose anywhere you want, but one particular location will, will be better than most others um, because it will make our problem solving uh, a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the axis of rotation to be right here, okay, where I'm dotting it. Uh, the reason why I'm going to choose it to be there is because, remember, I'm trying to find the fraction of the weight supported by this shore. Okay, and I actually want to try to take this out of my equation. So if I put the axis of rotation right beneath this force, the lever arm for this force is zero because it's right at the axis of rotation. So the torque just drops out. So basically now if I assume my axis of rotation is here, I have now only two torques, okay, in my problem. I have two forces acting on the rigid bar, that is, and then therefore they produce two torques. So, uh, why don't we call this, um, why don't we call this torque number one? Actually, it doesn't even matter. I'll, I'll, I'll use the shore and then the weight, okay? So we'll say that the, uh, the force of the, the, excuse me, the torque at the shore, now remember this force will be, uh, or this torque I should say being produced by that force is positive because it would cause a counterclockwise rotation. And the weight then would produce the clockwise rotation, therefore that weight, the torque produced by that weight is uh, positive, uh, excuse me, negative. So torque at the shore minus the torque at the center of gravity will be equal to zero, right? This says that the torque at the shore will be equal to the torque at the center of gravity. Now let's expand on those two terms. Okay, so here we have R at the shore F sure sine sine of the lever arm relative to the force at the shore will be equal to R center of gravity, F center of gravity, multiplied then by sine theta at the center of gravity. Now you can notice that right all of these angles between the lever arm and the forces are 90 degrees. So therefore sine of 90 is one, so they just cancel, okay? And now what we're after Remember, we're after a ratio, a.k.a. a fraction, as they asked us, um, that the opposite shore is supporting, or the fraction of the total weight that the opposite shore is supporting. So really what I'm going to do here is I'm going to solve this for the force that the shore is uh, it, uh, exerting on the bridge. And then I'm going to take this force and divide it by the weight of the shore. Okay, excuse me, <laughs> not by the weight of the shore, by the uh, weight of the drawbridge. Okay, uh, something else that you could do is you, instead of doing it all, you know, instead of doing too much work in that uh, particular method, you can realize that basically what I want to find, right, is the force that the uh, shore produces on the bridge and divide it by the total weight, right, the force due to the weight. 
And the force due to the weight is actually going to be the same as F sub CG. So really what I can do in this equation is I can take this value and divide it by this. In other words, divide out from this side F sub CG. I know I'm using some different letters here and there, but remember F, the force due to the center of gravity is the same as the force of the weight. So I'm gonna divide that CG. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm also going to then divide out uh, R sub S from both sides. So that cancels there. This cancels here. And what we're left with is that the, the fraction, right, of the weight supported by the shore to the total weight will be equal to the lever arm of the center of gravity divided by the lever arm to the shore from the axis of rotation. Isn't that quite interesting? It's so simple. It works out to such a nice little fraction. So this is this comes out to be F sub S over C, I keep doing that over CG is equal to the lever arm of the center of gravity, which was in my picture here, 1.5, and divided by the radius, uh, well, yeah, the radius, but the um, lever arm for the force of the shore. And that whole, it would be that total distance, right? Which would be 1.5 plus 7.5. And what does that work out to be? Looks like it's gonna be about 1 sixth, right? Yeah. Yeah, that works out to be one sixth. So one over six. One second, one over six. So that's the, excuse me, so that's the fraction. All right, letter B. So what is the direction and magnitude of the force the hinges exert on the bridge under these circumstances? Well, all right, so let me label this letter A. Letter B, I already talked about the direction, right? The direction of the force that the hinges will exert will be directly upwards, just like the force that the shore exerts will be, is, is also directly upwards, okay? Um, it's a little confusing with this picture from the text because you got vectors all over the place, but those have nothing to do with the problem, all right? Uh, at least for this one, uh, probably coming up in the next question or something. So in any case, if you know one-sixth of the total weight, right, is being supported by the shore, well, where's the other five six being supported by? Guess where? The hinges, okay? So basically, I know that then five six of the total weight is being supported by the hinges, or that will equal the force supplied uh, by the hinges. So it's easy, right? Five six multiplied by the weight, which is 2,500 kilograms. That's what they gave to us multiplied by 9.8 will equal F sub H, and just plug it into the calculator now. So we get five divided by six times 2,500 times 9.8, and here we get a value of about 2.04 times 10 raised to the fourth. All right, and that's in terms of Newtons. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so very much for tuning in. Hope this video helped. If it did, subscribe and uh, hit that like button. All right, and I look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.